Okay, so how do you how do you describe your position? Now you see, when I describe my position, I say that okay, I'm currently at five kilometers from the Keke International Airport. Do you know where I'm at? Do you, are you able to pinpoint my exact location based on this information? I'm saying that I am five kilometers away from Keke Airport. Are you able to pinpoint my exact location? No, why? Because you don't know the direction, right? You don't know the direction. Is it five kilometers to the north, south, east, or west? So that means uh, this information given is not complete. Okay, so then I make another sentence. I say that, okay, I am at five kilometers to the south of KK International Airport. So you take a map, you find where is the airport, you make a dot, and you measure, okay, south, towards the south, five, kilometer, five kilometers. Okay, there you have my location. Now, what I'm giving here is two very important quantity. First is I give 5 km. The 5 km, the 5 km is we say the magnitude. That means how large is it? Okay, the size, the numerical value, for example, 5 km or 10 km or 20 km. This is the magnitude. Okay, you have heard about magnitude of earthquake, right? You got 6.0, 7.0. So the numerical value. Magnitude is what? Just need a numerical value. If I say force, 5 newton, 10 newton, that's magnitude. So higher magnitude means that it's higher, higher amount. Now, I say 5 km, that's magnitude. And then also I give you a direction. Okay, so magnitude and Direction, both are included. What is the direction? South, south of KK Airport. So with this statement, you know my current position. Now, beside then this tour, I also give you a reference point. When I describe my position, I also give a reference point. What a reference point is about? KK International Airport. So if you don't know where is it, then you don't know my location. That is my reference point. Okay. So where I'm at right now, I'm in KK. Okay, where is KK? KK is in Sabah. Okay, is the, the, the coast of Sabah. Okay, then you are using, you are always referring to something when you describe your position. Okay, so without the reference point, you cannot refer. That is why, look when you imagine design Y Taikong, everything around you is just empty space. You cannot see anything. If I ask you to describe your location, can you describe the location? You are not able to describe the location because your surrounding have nothing, nothing for you to refer. Okay, so that's the first one to understand. The position requires magnitude and direction, the 5 km and the south in order to be complete, in order to make sense. Okay, so in physics, position juice displacement okay now we have distance and displacement right displacement is the same as position just that in physics we give it a different term okay so what is the difference between distance and displacement here we will look at more detail between these two now let's talk about distance first distance can neither travel the length. In other words, I can say that the length of path travel. Example, look at you have an object, it starts from here, it goes like this, like this, like this, like this. You can calculate the distance traveled by this distance travel by this object. You take the path, right? So you measure the path here, maybe five, Okay, five meter, uh, five meter, five meter, five meter. Then you just add up the length of the path taken, 20 meter. Now, if I ask, what is the displacement of the object? How would you answer? Again, displacement is 
position, right? So when I ask about the displacement, I'm currently asking about what is the current position of the object. So that object starts from here, start, now it goes to this Q, this ending. So it has now the position is in. Well, refer. Well, now what a reference point. What a reference point is what a starting position. Okay, so I was saying that I Q. So it was a side right side. I'm to the right side or the east of point P. So I will measure this length here. Let's say it's fifteen meter. Then I would say displacement is fifteen meter due uh, east. Again, what I'm giving here magnitude so meter I O direction east. So magnitude and direction, this quantity, we give it a name. We call it the vector quantity. Vector is your magnitude and direction. Now, tan tan magnitude, we call it scalar. Scalar and vector quantity. Okay, so distance, the symbol is B. We call the first letter D, distance. Displacement, the symbol, because D is already done. 我们不可以用 VD， 我们用另外一个 symbol， 我们用 S， 它的 symbol 是 S， OK， 所以我写这边 S。So this is distance and this is displacement。Unit 是一样的 ，distance 我们用 meter， 然后 displacement 我们用也是 meter。So SI unit， remember to watch previous lesson， I talk about the SI unit everything。OK， so displacement is a vector quantity 啊。Now Here, 如果我讲有另外一个 object， 它走这样子，从 P 它走这样子。This path， 它的 path 是跟这个不同吗？对不对 ？What about the displacement? Is the displacement the same? If this is journey A and this is journey B, object A and object B, object A 跟 object B 它们的 displacement 都是一样的，因为你看，不管它的 path 怎样走。可是它的 starting 跟它的 ending position 是一样，所以它们两个 share 同样的 displacement。OK， 那如果我给你多一个 example，let's say 我们有 object C， 然后 object C 走这样子一个圆圈，回来这样子原点，就很像你去跑那个 jogging track， 你跑一圈，然后你回来原本的地方，你的 distance 是多少？但你就算了、哦、那个 track 的距离。Okay, four hundred meter. That is your distance. What about your displacement? You start here. You come back at the same position. Starting and ending is the same place. Your displacement is zero because you are at the original position. So displacement is zero meter. So what is really displacement is that we take two points, starting. Ending and then we draw a straight line. That length is our displacement. You see what I did here, P to Q. I take the start, I take the end, I draw the straight line, and then I calculate the length. This is my displacement. Okay. So displacement, I can call it the shortest distance between two points. 因为如果你有两个 point， 你的 starting， 你的 ending， 你讲哪最短的距离，最短的距离就是你画一条直线，你的 curve 线一定是长过直线的吗？所以最短的距离就是你画一条直线。所以我们 define displacement as shortest distance between two points。OK， 可以吗 ？All right 啊。So 记得一定要给 direction。如果我讲 This object has been displaced by five meter. Displaced 的意思是什么 ？Displaced 就是好像它的 position change, the position change. So we say it is displaced. If I say that the object has been displaced by five meter, your next question will ask to where, to which direction? Because the object can be displaced to here, five meter. It can be displaced to here. To here or even to here. 
So you have to give a direction. It is displaced to the right by five meter. That is the correct way to describe displacement. Okay, so it is independent of the path. 我们不理它怎样走，总之它的 starting 跟它的 ending 的距离，它是 displacement. We are least bothered about the journey. We only care about. We only care about what. We only care about before and after. Okay, so that's the difference between distance and displacement. Okay, take some note on that, and we go to the next one. We go to the examples. Okay, we show you. I show you a few examples. Let me just draw a line here. Okay, example one. Let's say we got three station, station A, B, C on a straight road, ten meter apart. Uh, a person started at station A, walks to station C. Okay, C over here, and then come back to B. What is the distance travel? Simple. D equals to. 10 plus 10, and then come back another 10, right? So you got 30 meter. Okay. Now, what about the displacement? He walks to C, and then he takes a U-turn. U-turn uh, on, on the same road, back, backward 10 meter. So the displacement is, you take the initial, where is initial? That is the starting. In other words, this is our reference point, okay? And our final position over here. This is our ending. Okay, then how far am I from the starting position? I'm I'm 10 meter. I'm 10 meter away to the right side of my starting position. So I would say here 10 meter east. Okay, now how usually uh, we use sign for the direction. Nikkei is here 10 meter east, Nikkei is here 10 meter uh, to the right. 或者你也可以，我们用 sign 就是 positive ten meter。那个 sign 代表它的 direction。如果 positive 是去右边，如果 negative 去左边。Okay， so 你看，我给你多一个 example。Let's say 同样的 A B C， the same station， but this time the person walks backward。Okay, at first, he start to walk to the sea, and then he walks backward all the way past the initial position here. What is the distance? D equals to 10, 10. We have another 10. We have another 10. We have another 10. Okay, here is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50. Okay, displacement. Starting at A, ending at D. So 10 to the left. That is 10 meter west. Or the okay jump. 10 meter left. Now to need a reference then. Okay, you need a reference to the initial direction, just another point A. Now 10 meter minus. This is how you give the answer for the displacement. So Conventionally, the sign, convention sign, is that we take to the right as positive. Okay, so here is your reference point. Whatever is your reference point. If you're at the right side of it, you take positive sign. If you're on the left side, we take negative sign. 就很像你的那个 number line. Okay, you draw the y, x, y axis. Here is positive value. Here is negative value. The same for up and down. If you're going up, so here's your reference. If you're going up, then it will be a positive displacement. If you're going down, then it will be a negative displacement. Okay, right. I'll show you one more example. Let me just clear this front part. Okay, 
Okay, let's do another one. Example two. Again, we got three station. This is looking from the top, uh, uh, top view. So it's like you're looking down. You got three station here. A person walks from A to B, and then from B to C. Three meter, four meter. Distance traveled. Okay, distance equals to seven meter. Displacement. Displacement is so you take the start. The end, you draw the shortest length between here, right? And this one is your displacement. So you calculate the length of this. How do you calculate this length? It would be equals to Pythagoras theorem. Three square plus four square. You got five meter. Okay, is this complete? You are only giving the magnitude. You have to give the direction. So what is the direction? We put a because this one is like, uh, you can, it's, it's like you're looking down from the top, right? So we cannot use like positive and negative. Positive and negative is only for one line. Like either you move forward or backward. You either move forward or backwards. Okay, that is, you can use positive or negative. But for this one, because you can turn left, right like this, right? So we it would be better if we can use the, compass uh, direction so north south uh, west east and this direction would be the southeast okay so five meter we use the compass direction south southeast because it's two-dimensional so five meters southeast like this that is my my answer Okay, after you finish, we go to the next slide. Okay, oops, I'm clearing this. So we go to the next slide. Next one, we will look at speed versus velocity. Okay, so we're done with distance, displacement. Huh? Now we look at speed and velocity. Now what is speed? How fast you go? Okay, what is velocity? Put it simply, how fast you go in a specific direction. Let me give you examples. Suppose that there is a particle, okay, an object starting at point P, and it goes like this. Till point Q. It travels in a curved path that has a length of 10 meter and it takes 10 seconds to reach here. To calculate the speed of the object, you know how to calculate it. So speed equals to distance over time. Now the symbol for speed uh, is also S, uh, which is the same as the displacement. So how do you know which one is the, which one? If I write S equals to five M, how do you know this one is speed or displacement? You look at the unit, okay? So if this is meter, then this is displacement. If I write S equals to five meters slash second, okay, then you know this is speed. They share the same symbol, okay? So speed equals to distance over time. So we would put 10 meter 
divided by 10 second equals to one meter slash second. Okay, so you have meter divided by second, you get meter slash second. What does it mean? One meter slash second. Mei you travel for one meter. Where? Where where you go? Every second, one meter, but where? Along this path. It's like this. One second, you go one meter here. The next second, you go one meter here. Next second, you go one meter here. Again, the next second, you go one meter. So it's along the path. Okay, you can turn, you can turn left, you can turn right. You can go up, you can go down. We don't care. Okay, but your speed is just one meter per second. I don't care where you go, left or right. Okay, so I don't care about the direction. Only the magnitude. So speed is a scalar quantity. Only magnitude. Okay, let's try this. I want to find the displacement. Oh, sorry, the velocity. Okay, velocity has a symbol V. The unit is the same, huh? same as speed, meter slash second. So to find velocity, we use a very similar equations. We just change the distance to displacement. Displacement divided by time. Okay, so okay, we'll pass it some V tang yi, S over T. Okay, displacement. Then you have to first get the displacement. So P and Q, you draw a line starting and ending. We calculate this length. Okay, so let's say the length is eight meter. That means the displacement is eight meter. What is the direction? Southeast. Okay, so displacement is eight meter southeast. Okay, I don't need to write it because I'm doing the calculation here. So eight meter divided by the same time, right? The same time, T is 10 seconds. There's just one time. So 10 second equals to 0 0.8 meter slash second. Okay, let's see. What does this tell us? Every one second, it moves 0 0.8 meter. Where? Along the purple line. Okay, along the along the purple line. So one second, it moves 0 0.8 meter. Okay, sorry. I changed the word. Not move. It is displaced. We cannot say that the object move in this direction. Why? Because there is no path in this direction. Where is the path? The path is the white line here, right? This is the path. This is the, the path, a physical path, a physical path that you can travel. But there's no path here, right? So that means uh, the object is not physically moving in this direction. So therefore, we cannot say the object move. We say what? We say the object is being displaced in this direction. Okay, displaced means shifted, the position change. Okay, so in other words, velocity is termed as how fast an object is displaced from P to Q. How fast? Okay, so 0 0.8 meter per second. One second, it goes here, 0 0.86 second. One second, 0 0.8 meter. One second, 0 0.8 meter. And 10 seconds, it would be, it would have been uh, displaced to point Q. Okay, so the object has not physically moved in this direction. It is just displacing. Because as the object is moving here, Okay, two-dimensional view. Let's say sorry. Let's say the object is moving like like a rainbow path. 
Okay. The ball is moving here. Okay. From the side, somebody throw the ball to another person. Okay. Person B, person P, throw the ball to person Q. And you, the third person, you are seeing from the side. So what do you see? You see the you see the ball go like a curve, right? So that is the distance traveled by the by the ball. But imagine, uh, imagine if you see from the top. What do you see? You cannot see the curve, right? If you see from the top, you cannot see the curve. You are seeing the ball is like moving horizontal. Okay, if you see from the top, the ball is like moving like horizontal like this. Okay, so just to give you a, a idea between like this is the distance travel and this is like the displacement S. Okay, just like just like this example here. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Right, where, where are we just now? Okay, so now we already know the velocity and the formula, how to calculate it. And what does it mean? Huh? So speed, if I say that the speed is five meter per second, the object can be moving here, five meter per second, can be moving here, five meter per second, or here, five meter per second. There is no direction being concerned. Okay, so velocity has to be only one direction. It's a specific direction. Okay, so that is the difference. We're done with this one. Now, again, uh, velocity, same with displacement, it has a sign. Uh. So, if you look at what I'm saying, uh, we use positive velocity. If you look at the we use negative velocity. If you look at positive velocity, means negative velocity. So you look at uh, minus four ms, then you know it's moving towards the, the left. This is convention, uh, convention, guiding. But you don't have to follow it. But usually we follow this sign. You can choose the right side to be positive. The most important thing is that your opposite side must be negative. Okay, I can choose the side that is positive. But my opposite side must be negative. Okay, I can choose the side that is positive. But my opposite side must be negative. So the sign is to let you know the opposite. Uh, when we do the question, then you 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 know what I'm what I'm saying. Okay, so that is on uh, speed and velocity. So next one, we will look at different types of speed and velocity. Okay, I'll give you one one minute. Okay. So in this section, uh, types of speed and velocity, uh, it apply for both uh, speed and velocity. So, for example, average speed, it okay, applies for average velocity. Okay, so average speed or or velocity. So first type is average. What is the meaning of average? Pingjin. Okay, so let's say, uh, 我, 我去一个长途, Okay, 我从这里, 
我去这边 ，let's say 它是 five hundred kilometers。I go from A to B, 500 kilometers. I drive. Now, if you look at the speed, if let's say you have reached B, when you start from A, right, you have reached B, and then somebody come and ask you, how fast were you traveling at? How do you answer? Do you answer? Okay, I was traveling at 80 and then I moved to 100 and then I moved to 180 and then I decreased down to 50 and then finally I reached B. You don't answer that way, right? So how do you answer? You just give one speed. You give one speed. How did you get the speed? You take the distance that you travel divided by how long it takes for you to reach, right? So that means you take the total distance divided by the total the total time so if it takes you uh, five hours then 500 kilometers divided by five so you get 100 kilometer per hour this is your average speed you are moving on average 100 kilometer per hour now does your speed during the journey your speed is never at 100 kilometer per hour, right? Sometimes your speed go beyond 100. Sometimes your speed drop below 100. So it keeps changing. In other words, you can see the, the meter, the speedometer, right? So it keeps changing. You know, some, so it's never 100 kilometer per hour maintained like this. Okay? So understand the difference. Here, this is what? This is average speed. But then what about the speed that is keeps changing when you are traveling? Okay, change from 80 to 100, 120. That we call it, we call that instantaneous. Instantaneous speed or uh, velocity. Instantaneous, instant. What does it mean, instant? Time, specific, specific time your speed at that specific second, that specific time. So during the travel, sometimes you go 80 kilometers per hour, sometimes you go 120, sometimes you go 200. At these specific times is your instantaneous speed. But your average is 100. So we got two types of speed here, average and instantaneous. Okay, understand the difference. You see, this is the speedometer. Okay, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Let's say you take one second to go from 10 to 20. One second, one second, one second, and one second. So you're accelerating. Somebody asks you, what is your speed at the third second? Okay, then you'll find, okay, one second, one second, one second. Third second, I would reach 40. Okay, so third second, what is your speed? 40 kilometer slash hour. Okay, what is your speed at the fourth second? Fourth second would be 50. Okay, 50 kilometer slash hour. What about if I say, what is your speed at 3.5 second? Then you would go down here. Three, this is three second. This is four second, right? So 3.5 is somewhere in the middle here. That would be around 45. So then you will say 45 kilometer per hour. All this, it is your instantaneous speed this is instantaneous speed at this particular second this is instantaneous at this particular second and this one is at this particular second the very next second your speed change you can see third second 40 3.1 change already 3.5 change already so instantaneous we only talk about that specific time the very next second 
it changes and it keeps changing like that. Okay, understand? Right? So that is instantaneous and it is different from average. So, speed, distance over time, average. Okay? You can see the distance A to B, 5km, okay, 0.5 hour. 你直接把它除, 这个, 这个, 你, 你是在算着, average. Average between the Average between A and B. Okay, average between A and B. So look at where you got station here, C. This is another 5 km. 0 0.5 hour. Calculate the average speed between A and C. So average speed between A and C. Then I will take what is my formula? Total distance divided by total time. Okay, so between A and C, so on a jungle to A to C the distance uh, 10, 10, uh, 10 meter, uh, sorry, 10 km divided by one hour. Total distance divided by total time. So 10 divided by one, we got 10 kilometer per hour. So this is average speed between A and C. Okay, so look what you can do. A and B average speed between A and B is equals to equals to distance five divided by divided by time divided by zero point five five divided by zero point five we get ten kilometer slash hour. Again, this is the average speed between A and B. So it depends on the na 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 liang point. Okay. If you tell me the average speed between this point and that point, then you need to na total distance to the total time. Okay. I'll give you an example. Ah, I'll give you an example. Ah. Okay. Let's say. Let's say A. B. This is 25km. Uh, speed is 2. Let's do like this. 250. And the speed is 125 meter per, sorry. Kilometer per hour. And then this one is 500 km. And the speed is, let's just take, uh, okay, it's 500 km per hour. Okay, I think, I think we just take 250. Okay, now, you got to, Destination. The driver go from A to B at a speed of one to five, and the distance is two five zero. And the driver goes continue from B to C at a different speed, right? So it's now traveling at two fifty. If the question asks you calculate average speed of the whole journey, how do you calculate? Okay, come back to formula. Total distance over total time. So the whole journey, total distance is 250 加 500. Not to, total time. Le. You gave okay, total time. It's okay, speed. No? It's okay, distance and speed. Well. So you need to do extra step to find time. Is okay? Because you know a to B the speed is 125. distance is 250. So I can find time. Speed equals to distance over time, right? So time equals to distance divided by speed. Okay, so distance to 
除掉 speed， 你拿到时间。So two fifty divided by one two five， you get two hour. Two hours between A 跟 B。然后 B 跟 C 呢，我们用一样五百除两百五十，也是拿到 two hour。So, 把它加起来 ，total distance 是两百五十加五百除以二 hour 加二 hour。So 我们有七五零除四多少？一百七点五 kilometer slash hour。这个是你的答案 ，average speed。Common mistake. We cannot do this. 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 That is not how you find average. You find by taking the total distance divided by the total displacement. Ah, uh, sorry, total time. Okay. Same form. If average velocity, then you take total displacement divided by total time. Okay, average velocity. Very similar to average speed, uh, we take total uh, displacement divided by total time. There you have. This is one. This is two. The one that I box uh, is the formula. If I say that driver is in the middle, he is in the middle, he is in the middle, and he continue his journey. 讲说你 average speed 需要 include 吗？需要 include， 所以你要把三个钟加进去你的 total time。OK， 所以这边二加二，如果他有 rest 啦 ，rest for three hours， right？ So you have to plus three hours as well. Plus three, it becomes seven. So seven fifty divided by seven, you get one zero seven point. One four. This is the average speed. If he takes a three-hour rest in between, why we have to add? Because the three-hour rest is also part of the journey. Okay, is also part of the journey. So you have to take it and into the calculation of average speed. Okay, how? Like working one eager. Uh, five minute break. So every one hour, I'll give like about five minute break. So you can go and you can go to the bathroom or you drink some water, anything. And we'll come back after five minutes. So 8.01. Okay, 8 o'clock and 01. We will come back.
Okay, we are back. And we'll look at the last one, one more, okay? Acceleration. Shall we continue? Right. Now, acceleration. So, so far we have already looked at displacement, distance, speed, velocity. And we come to the last one, acceleration. What is acceleration? You see, huh? if you sit in a car, when you sit in a car, and then the car is moving at constant speed, Constant means the same, okay? So the speed is not changing. We are moving at, say, 50 kilometers per hour. If the road, if the friction is very, very small until you cannot feel it, and the road is like, is, is perfectly smooth, and the car is moving at constant speed, uh, then you would feel like as if you, you were not moving at all. Okay, because your body, because your body cannot differentiate between staying at rest and moving at constant velocity. Yes, your body cannot differentiate. It cannot tell the difference between being at rest, not moving, and moving with constant speed. Let me give you another example. You may have experienced this. You go on the airplane during the cruising stage. The airplane has three stages. Huh? So you have like uh, takeoff, and then you have the cruising, and then you have the landing. Cruising is when the airplane is moving at constant speed in the air. When the pilot put the airplane on autopilot. Okay? So because you're moving, because you're flying in air, right? In, in, in the middle of air, so you cannot feel any surface. You're not on the road. So you cannot feel any friction. There's just the air friction, but the air friction is you can hardly feel it. You are sitting inside the airplane, right? So if the airplane is moving at constant speed, you will feel like very static. It's like you don't even feel like you're, you're, you're moving. Sometimes you have this feeling, okay? Sometimes you have this feeling like you don't even feel like you are, you're actually moving, okay? Because you're traveling at constant velocity. It feels just like when you are sitting on the couch in your house and then eventually you fell asleep in the airplane. Okay? Same thing. No matter how fast you move, you could be in a fast-moving train, like a bullet train. If you're inside, you wouldn't know that you're actually moving that fast. And inside the train, it feels like very static. Right? It feels like very static. And also... Another example is like the rotation of the earth. Do you know how fast does the earth rotate around its own axis? About 500 meters in one second. That is the speed of the rotation of the earth. That means, uh, do you feel that you are actually now moving 500 meters per second? No, right? You don't feel anything. You feel like you are at rest. Okay? So, the rotation of the earth is very it's very fast, 500 meters per second, but you don't feel it. You feel like you are at, at rest. If the, if the earth stops spinning for one second, what will happen? If the earth stops spinning for one second, you will be thrown forward across five streets in one second. That is about 500 meters. That means that you will smash into the wall in front of you. At what speed? At 500 meters per second, that speed. Pretty deadly, yeah? <laughs> Okay, if the earth stopped moving just one second. And when the, when the earth stopped moving one second, then only you feel that you're actually, oh, I, I'm actually trying that fast. But currently, you don't feel, you don't feel anything. Okay? Same thing 
with the orbit of the Earth. How fast the Earth orbit around the Sun? That is about 30 kilometers in one second. Okay? Do you feel like you're moving at 30 kilometers in one second? No. But if the Earth stop orbiting for one second, from here in KK, you will reach Tuaran in one second, 30 kilometers away. Then you know you're actually traveling that fast. You were actually traveling, traveling that, that fast. Okay, so what is the point of all this? You see, everything you see around you is, is an example. Okay, so that means the point I'm trying to make here is that you don't get the sense of motion. You don't get the sense of movement from velocity, from speed. Okay, okay? it's not, uh, how do I put it in Chinese? Okay, never mind. You, you don't get the sense of movement from speed itself. You get the sense of movement from the change in the speed. When there's a change in the speed, only then you feel that you're moving. Okay, so when you're sitting in a car, the car accelerate and decelerate. The change in speed, you feel like you are moving. Plus together with the friction of the road, okay, then it makes you feel like you are in motion. There are some cases you don't feel like you're in motion is because you're moving at constant velocity. Constant, constant speed. Okay, so here we'll look at acceleration. What is acceleration? To put it simply, it is the change. It is, it is that thing that gives you the sense of motion. Okay, it is the change in speed. To be specific, uh, I would say the change in speed over time. It can be over a long period of time. It could be over a very short period of time, even milliseconds or seconds. That is also an acceleration. So it is the acceleration, the change in the speed that lets you know that you're actually in motion. And that is how your body uh, knows. Your body knows and then your body will respond. Will respond to the motion. So like when the car accelerates, you lean backwards. When the car brakes, you lean forward. So your body responds to this acceleration. Okay, so the change in, let me correct this. This one should be velocity. Okay, the change in velocity over time is acceleration. Now, you velocity is your magnitude, yeah, your direction. It's vector quantity. Okay, so if you have magnitude, the change in velocity is from 5 meters per second, you per there's a change in magnitude, so it has your acceleration. Okay? Or it can be a change in the direction. Let's say you are in a running track. So you move in a circle. You're moving at the same speed, 5 meters per second. Five meter per second around the, the path. But what about your velocity? Your velocity is can it be the same? Answer is cannot because why? Because uh, your velocity is changing when you are moving in a circle. When you're at this point, uh, your velocity is facing this direction. And when you come here, now your velocity is facing this direction. Okay, imagine like you're moving like in a anti-clockwise, all right? So you're moving like this from here to here, A to B. And when you come to here, C, your velocity is facing this direction. The magnitude can be the same, five meter per second, five meter per second, five meter per second, but the direction is different. So when there is a difference in direction, again, this is also called acceleration. In both cases, left and right, you are accelerating. Okay? Both cases, you are accelerating. So, 
if there is change in either one, there is acceleration. Okay, so acceleration is change in velocity over over time. So when you let's say you want to buy a car. They will often give you like the acceleration of the car from zero kilometer per hour to let's say 100 kilometer per hour. They will give you like a time how fast you can go from here to here. So there's a change in speed, zero to 100, and they give you a time. Can you do it in five seconds? Can you do it in two seconds? The longer the time, the short, the smaller will be the acceleration. Let's say, imagine like you, you take 10 seconds to reach from zero to 100. Acceleration very small. If you take only two seconds, one second, from zero, rise to 100, acceleration is very high. So acceleration is a change in speed over time in a specific amount of time. The longer the time, the smaller the acceleration, okay? So whenever there is acceleration, your body will, will respond. You can see, the the human brain is very hard. The human brain cannot understand acceleration very well. What do I mean by this? Imagine like you are sitting on the roadside. Okay, you sit on the roadside and then you look very far away. You see a car coming towards you at a constant speed. So immediately, your brain will give an idea of how long is it going to take for the car to reach you, judging from the how fast it is moving. Is it going to take five seconds, 10 seconds? You, your brain has an idea, okay? Because the car is moving at constant velocity, that means every second it is covering the same distance. So if every second it is covering the same distance, then you can kind of kind of guess, kind of predict how many seconds it can reach you, right? Okay. Now, what if the car is moving at increasing speed? It is accelerating towards you. What does it mean by accelerating towards you? That means every second it is covering larger and larger distance with each second pass by the distance is become greater 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 okay so you see you see the car from very far at first you have an idea how fast it is moving each second pass then you realize that it is moving faster than you thought right? It is moving faster than you, you thought. And each second pass by, your brain keep adjusting to it. Okay, the speed keeps changing. How come it's getting faster? It's getting faster. And by the time you realize it, the car is already in front of you. Right? Because you are dealing with something that is changing. Something that is changing. The velocity is changing every second. The distance is covering more and more. Okay, the first five seconds, it moved this much. The next five seconds, it could be moving much larger, much further. In the next five seconds, it could be moving way, way longer. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a uh, increase, a steep increase, like an exponent increase, something like that. Okay, so it's very hard for our brain to, to understand something that is changing, just like something that is accelerating towards you. And it's very difficult for you to predict if it's accelerating to you, how far, how long it is going to reach you. Okay? So that is one, like, just from the conceptual uh, idea of the acceleration. Okay? Huh? So acceleration. Now, let's come back here. I want to finish this. Uh, I will take about, like, 10 to 15 minutes. So let's come back here, the technical part of acceleration. Okay. You maybe you can take this down uh, if you have like 
you take a piece of paper and write down. Okay, so first let's start with a, a vehicle starting at rest at zero second. And the next second, it is moving at five meter per second. The next second, is moving at 10 meter per second. To calculate the acceleration, so you can clearly you can see the speed is changing. Huh? So acceleration is equals to, we use the formula again, uh, V minus U divided by T. Take this down. What is V? V is final velocity. U is initial velocity. And T is the time between them. So let's say if I pick this one as the initial zero, and this as the final 10. So I would calculate A equals to 10 minus zero divided by how long from zero to 10? One second here, another second here. So that is two seconds. So you get five meter slash second square. <laughs> okay, you can't huh? Need it. 分数的上面这边是meter slash second 你的分母是second 所以如果你把它除起来 你会拿到meter slash second square OK 如果我做下 M over S to S so M over S 乘 1 over S M over S square right so I, I can write this as M slash S square or I can write this as ms minus square. So acceleration the unit gun speed bu yang. second, it is a second square. So look at what yang tayu acceleration u ms square. Type of is may email pad velocity zai zeng jia increases by u meter per second. Who's the second square? This is velocity. So meimiao velocity increases by five meter per second. That is the meaning of acceleration five meter second square. And you can see from the diagram, one second plus five. The next second plus five. So it's always plus five, plus five, plus five. Tada change, yeah, just another jia jia wu. It's a dose yang. Woman took a jiao tas mo. Look at how the change, it's a dose yang. Woman jiao ta constant acceleration. Constant acceleration. Just a need that zeng jia need a velocity. The same amount. So you need a V is small. E V is increasing, right? V is increasing. Constant the is just uh same, uh, same the is not changing the is. So these two things you have to remember. So the next time if I say constant acceleration, then you think of the this movement. Okay. Okay, let's do this case one. Situation number one, okay? Now we go to case number two. Now the car goes like this. 10 meters slash second, zero. And then one second, 10 meter. Two second, 10 meter per second. Okay, what happened to the change? Is there any change in velocity? No. Huh? So 10, 10, 10, 10, no change. That means the acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero. Zero acceleration, Tadak velocity is constant. So I write here, constant velocity. Please, please not confuse. Please do not confuse with zero acceleration and zero velocity. 如果我讲 zero velocity 代表它不是在它没有在动 OK 如果我讲 zero acceleration 
它有在动吗？它有在动，只是它没有 increase 或者 decrease 它的 velocity。So zero acceleration, the object is moving. Because many students they confuse it when they see zero acceleration, they think that the object is not moving. Zero acceleration object is moving, but same speed. Okay. Now third one. Uh, okay. Sorry, this one should be two seconds. This one is three seconds. Zero ms. Okay. Every second. What is it doing? Oops, oops. What happened to, to my brain? Yeah, this one is one second. This one is two seconds. Every second, the velocity is decreasing by, by five. So minus five, minus five. So acceleration is, so if you take the final minus initial over time, so it finals is about ling, Initial is 10, so 0 减十除以这边从这边两秒，你会拿到 negative， so 减五 meter slash second square， 减五 acceleration 有 direction 的， okay， I write down here acceleration 是 vector quantity 就很像 velocity 这样子，它有加，它也有减。如果我写 acceleration 减五，意思说你的 acceleration 是向左，你的 direction of motion 是向哪里？你是朝着哪里走？右边对吗？你走右边，所以这里是你的 direction of motion。我放它 d o direction of motion。OK， 你的 direction of motion 是右边，也就是你的 velocity 的 direction 啊。你的 acceleration 是左边，因为你找到 negative 吗？如果你的 direction of motion 跟 acceleration 是相反的话哦，这样你就是 slowing down。如果你的 direction of motion 跟 acceleration 是一样方向 ，then you are speeding up。That means acceleration if it's if it's Uh, opposite direction with the direction of motion, we call it what? Slowing, slowing down, we call it what? Slowing down, we call it deceleration. Deceler, deceleration. Okay, so generally, negative acceleration means deceleration. Generally, not always the case because you have to see the direction of motion. Okay, in way. 我的 direction of motion 可以是向左边，然后我的 acceleration 是 negative acceleration， 也是向左边，两个是一样方向哦。这个是 deceleration 吗？不是，这个是 acceleration。意思说你的 speed increases， 可是你是朝着左边走。OK， so that's why 我讲 generally negative acceleration 是 deceleration。你要看，你也是要看它的方向是不是一样。可以吗 ？Okay, if you any any question, uh, you don't understand, you want me to repeat, uh, please let me know in the chat. Okay, right. So three cases: case one, case two, case three. That's one last one. Okay, after I finish that, then I'll give you a a, a break. Let me clear this first. Just one one more. Case number number four. Zero second and 
zero meter per second. One meter per second. This is 15 and here, three seconds, this is 30. Okay, now if you look at the acceleration, the change in velocity is only the acceleration is like I've been to many the acceleration is meter slash second square to many the acceleration is meter slash second square need the extension to Benson shoe meter slash second square so it put constant number put constant woman Delta non uniform acceleration Okay, so non uniform acceleration, cut a speed, jang, cut a speed, jang jia yes, right? increasing speed. Look on it, compare case four gun case one. You saw from there. So case one is constant acceleration, speed increasing. Case four is non uniform acceleration, speed yes, increase, because speed increased up, it's quite so it speed increases. Faster increase, faster. In way, may email need the acceleration die, die, zheng jia. Now need the speed you zheng jia gong li hai. Okay, so it did the acceleration is change in velocity. Has na ge change. Dang wo jiang change, ta ke yi shi jia, ta ke yi shi jian. So four cases. Please remember this. Okay, the the word constant acceleration, uh, non-uniform acceleration, zero acceleration. Will you will always see it? You will always see it. Okay. Now another word for this one, uh, the constant. Another word is uniform. Okay. You so tahu yang uniform acceleration. Actually, is 一样的意思 Uniform 也就是 constant 的意思 Okay, that's why that's why today we're talking non-uniform, just not constant, lah. So now we count uniform acceleration, uniform velocity, non-uniform acceleration. Okay, now deceleration, yes, is one another word called retard, retardation. Exactly the same meaning. Retardation is deceleration. So these are a different term that you will come across okay, when doing the exercises.